Okay, there's the relay. Activate the uh, direct key. There's your direct key output port right there. All right, plus I've done all the less common enhancements. Uh, upgraded the filter buffers. Upgraded the filter, the 10.7 IF filter. Upgraded your first RF amp. Uh, done the full coverage mod. And added the CP1. So, now I'm getting ready to start on the amp and modifying the amp. Okay, more to come. Okay, there's your transistors. I haven't screwed them down yet. I just got the heat sink compound in there and got the transistor sitting in the place. Last of my RFPs. I really like these. They were good transistors. But RF Parts doesn't list them anymore. And I guess they're not going to get any more. We all know they're rebranded HGs, oh. but I really liked them. I mean, they were priced well and they work extremely well. But gotta get back to it. Still got a lot more to do. More to come. Okay, getting close. Some of you saw the first part of the video, you're probably going, hey, something's different. Well, you're right, it is. Uh, you guys know that I have someone that helps me build these. This relay, uh, it's, it's one of the, the people that helped me build these likes to take the covers off of these and solder the wires directly to the center. Okay, for the antenna connections in and out. I don't like that. I learned in the military that over a period of time, them being exposed to the air all the time like this, they build up carbon on the contact points. So I snatched the damn thing out and put one in there with a cover on it. Okay, also I didn't like the position of this. It was too far over and the wire was having to come back and wrinkle that up. It was having to come back to make the, the connection point here. So I moved it over about an inch and a quarter and now the wire comes straight down to the connection point. All right, another thing that I'm about to take care of is, and why they did this, I have no idea. Maybe the wire wasn't long enough, but they soldered the wire connections for the remote to the spring pins to the springs you know where the, the when you poke the quarter inch phone jack in there now this would probably work but I don't like it like that I want them on the lugs not down on the spring pins so I'm going to be taking care of that right here in a second all right now, you noticed all the little half watt or two watt resistors are gone. And I've got five wire resist or five watt resistors in here for the balance resistors. Okay. And I put five watts in all the feedback resistors. All right. Another thing, a pet peeve of mine, is when they do the sideband bias for me. Uh, it's electrically correct, but these connections, these connection points are just out, just sticking out, floating. Just no support whatsoever. I don't like that. Because with this thing in a vehicle, all of this is going to vibrate. If after a period of time, it will break. You guys know that. If it's vibrating all the time, especially with this much unsprung weight out on the end of it yeah it's going to vibrate so what I do I put these uh, terminal strips in there for each one I need some, to buy some one terminal 
deals. But anyway, I solder them to the uh, PC board so that they're nice and stable. And then I solder these connections to uh, one of the terminals. Yeah, you know, I mean, it probably would have been fine. There's probably hundreds of them running around out there without any kind of support on them, but I don't like that. That's not my style. I'm building a Hornet amplifier. It's got to be better than everybody else's amplifier. Okay, same thing with the bias circuit. I don't like having the voltage regulator just floating out in the air, so... I've connected it to a terminal strip as well. Uh, again, 5 watt resistors on the drop, voltage drop. Okay. And also, I include a 10k ohm resistor uh, for the LED. They put a 1k ohm and this wire goes straight to ground. Well, that makes it way too bright, especially at nighttime. Okay, at, at night time, yeah, you could drive a car by the brightness of that LED. So I put the 10K ohm resistor in there to dim that damn thing down. Just little things I like to do. Okay, I build these things like I'm building it for myself. You know, I mean, if I wouldn't want it like that, then I know damn well you don't want it like that. So... I correct it all right now uh, the individual that ordered this one wants a digital voltmeter put in here so he can see whether or not his power supply is holding up to the amount of current draw uh, you notice I haven't installed the power cables yet okay I wanted to get all this other stuff done before I put the power cables in and uh, I separate them, you know, positive on this side, negative on this side, but I'm going to stop doing that and just have them both on the same side because with a cable split like that, uh, and this particular case on this amplifier, it's going to have to have some really big cables, so it's kind of good that they're split. But on my other amplifiers, I'm going to be putting both of them on the same side again, uh, just so we don't have that split in the power cable so that when you come out with positive and negative, they can be together all the way out to your power supply or battery or wherever you hook it to, okay? Now you notice, see that heat sink right there? It goes all the way back to right there. You see that? There's plenty of cooling for these eight. And of course, the fan on the top is forcing air in which goes around the PC board underneath and then across the heat sink and out the back. Okay. We're applying positive pressure to this amplifier. We're forcing air around and across the heat sink. All right. Let me continue on. First thing I'm going to do is fix this and then the uh, go on to uh, installing the meter up here in the front which I'm going to have to take care to keep the RF out of it or it won't last very long more to come okay got the meter mounted there in the front got the wire soldered where I wanted them back here got power connected inside the box got the uh, RF uh, toroids on there I'm both positive and negative because RF can go either way also got a really good choke made up here for this guy uh, now he will only work when the amp is on because it's connected to the on side of the switch right there okay and right there is your direct key okay got him coming down here to the relay and i'll put some heat uh, hot glue on there to make sure those components didn't move around this is your direct key connection
okay I'm going to relabel these two but I don't have any pre-printed for a direct key but just know that this one is the one that you connect to the back of your radio okay and I need to put a fuse on the remote I haven't done that yet so that's next okay just a little 10 amp automotive fuse yeah so if your remote all of a sudden doesn't work first off find the short in your remote or in the cable going to it and then come in here and replace this fuse but don't just stick another fuse in there or stick a higher amp fuse in there that's the wrong thing to do find out why the fuse blew okay damn I'm almost done got to do some tuning but I got to finish putting the power cables together first more to come okay got your direct key hooked up I'm on the lower sideband power's turned all the way down let's turn mic gain all the way down I'm just going to key the mic You see the relay working. When I key the mic, the relay keys. When I unkey the mic, the relay unkeys. It doesn't need RF. Okay, you don't even need the SSB switch turned on if you've got it hooked to this radio. Here's the cable for that. It's shielded. Uh, one right into the direct key jack. And the direct key jack on the back of your radio is right in between the audio and the power connectors. Okay, you'll get this cable with it too. But when you key the microphone, okay. All right, I think we're done. So. Radio is complete, the amp's complete, your direct key's been installed. Time to box it up and get it shipped out. Let me get it all put back together and I'll do one final video. I don't remember if I showed you the power connections or not. There's your uh, 12 volts coming into the center of the bus, feeding all four of these kind of some you know symmetrically as much as we can uh, ground is in the middle of the board in between all the transistors so they all have uh, well uh, now there's no way to get it equal okay but it's a lot closer than putting it back here in the corner so the PC board though is does have pretty thick copper on it and you got to very wide ground plane of copper to carry the current but I thought I'd put it right there just to get it closer to the transistors okay all right I'm getting ready to put the covers on it uh, I need to recheck the tune because I bumped that thing so I'll do that real quick I got my uh, my analyzer I'll hook that up and run that real quick and check it out all right okay Jared here she is and it might help if I hook the power cables up to the radio you think better yeah, it will zero out once it warms up I'm on uh, let's see lower sideband I've already showed you the relay working you don't have to have the, the, if you're just running AM 
don't matter if you got the direct key connected or not. But if uh, you're operating sideband, try to have the direct key cable hooked up. That way it keys and unkeys uh, when you key and unkey the radio. Okay. See, like right now, I'm in lower sideband. I'm on key. Okay. And let's see, you can hear the amp key up. That's what I was saying. It doesn't matter if you're in sideband or what you're in. Okay. Alright, let's bring up some RF power and some mic gain on sideband. Hello, audio, audio one. And yeah, the, even my big power supply here is drop, dropping voltage. Oh. Hello, 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 hello. 91 ounce, just what we do it in. So it's going to use a lot of power. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Hope I didn't make none of you sick doing that. Okay, 1,000 watt slug on the left, 1,000 watt slug on the right. Left is average, right is peak. I'm on the times two on the peak side, which means where it says 100, that's 2,000 watts, okay? I've got the RF power on the Ranger, turned up about halfway. Hello, audio, audio, one, two, one, two, audio. And we're doing, what is that? That's about uh, 1,800 watts there. Audio, hello, hello, audio. Our voltage is dropping down to 12 volts. Okay. I'm going to bring the voltage up to 14.9. sideband. I'm on sideband. So, hello audio, audio one, two. Audio testing, testing one, two, one, two, ten. Alright. Uh, let's go to AM. Turn the power back a little bit. Need to turn the microphone gain down some too. Hello audio. Audio one two one two audio. Testing one two three three two one audio test. Audio hello hello audio. Audio, audio, one, two, one, two, audio. Audio, one, two, one, two, audio, hello, hello, audio, audio. Test one, two, three, three, two, one, audio. 
video dip. I've got the uh, RF power cut way back on the radio. So in fact, it's almost all the way down. Let's see. Bring it up. About right there. Audio, hello, hello, audio. That's on the AM. That's 1200 watts, and I've just barely got the RF power cracked open. My gain's all the way up. Test one, two, one, two, test. Hello, test. Test one, two. Back to side bend. Hello, audio. Audio, hello. Hello, audio. Audio test. Turn the RF power up a little bit. Audio, hello, audio, audio, one, two, one, two, audio. That was like 2,000 watts right there. About 2KW. Before my power supply I said, nope, ain't getting no more. show you where I had the mic gain. Okay, mic gain's all the way up there. RF power is way down here. You see that? Right there is all the way down. And I said it. See that line right there? Right there is where I was at. That's probably a good place to run it on AM. Now on sideband, you can run it all the way open. All right? Okay, buddy. Jared, I sure hope you enjoy your new radio amp combo. It was my pleasure to set it up for you. Sim 3, everybody.